Hello there, nice to see me. I have been gone for a while, pretty much a month since I released the last video. So what have I been doing all this time? And the answer is Open Assistant. Open Assistant is an open source replication of ChatGPT that we have been working on tirelessly for the last month. And we are currently collecting data for it. And that's where we need your help. We need you to help us collect data. And this, can you believe it, is actually fun. I'm going to show you how that works in just a bit, but I want to first tell you a bit more about the project. So here is our GitHub repo. That's kind of the central place. We were trending on GitHub for like three days straight, which is insane. So we're building this data collection platform, and we're also building the inference platform for the chatbot that we're going to get out of it. So what we envision Open Assistant to be is a chat-based assistant that can understand tasks, but also which goes way beyond the chat GPT. We we want it to be able to interact with third party systems. And we want the assistant to be able to do so to interact with any kind of external application whose interface can be somehow described via natural text. And we also want it to be able to retrieve information dynamically. I think one of the biggest downsides of current language models is that they're really static, they only know what is in their weights. And I strongly believe and I've repeated this for the last like four years, retrieval augmented language models are going to be the next big thing. But that's ahead of time. Right now, we're simply trying to replicate what ChatGPT does, but we're going to try to do it in the open. And we're going to try to do it in a size that can be deployed on regular hardware. That doesn't mean your Raspberry Pi, but it does mean that sort of the average Joe can run this either by themselves or with a quite cheap AWS deployment or something like this. So here you can see look at this stack, you could go to Silicon Valley and get like 10 million easy and seed funding for this slide deck, even though that's specifically like a Google Slides preset, this particular diagram, but I still love it. We but enough of high talking of future plans, what we want to do right now is get to the minimum viable prototype. And there we follow the instruct GPT paper instruct GPT is a paper by open AI or a blog post. I don't know what they do these days. It's something by open AI. And it's conceivably the sort of recipe that chat GPT used to be created as three stages on the left hand side, you see, we first collect demonstration data to train a supervised instruction tuned model, then we collect comparison data ranking data in order to train a reward model over that data. And then lastly, we use both of those things to do reinforcement learning, the whole thing is then called reinforcement learning from human feedback. And yeah, that's as far as we can tell how chat GPT was created. So let's just do the same, but let's do it better. And the crazy thing is we don't need that much. We only need I mean, instruct GPT has like around 30 K samples for each of their sub demonstrations. So we reckon if we have like 50 K or 100 K demonstrations, that's already enough. And with a couple of people doing a couple of things each day, which also turn out to be fun, we can get there. That's really, really cool. Now on top of the human data, we also collect instruction data sets that we can make into data into like since synthetic pseudo data. But I have to say, like, I've experienced this for a while right now, and nothing beats human data. This is you'll see in the website, it's so cool what humans come up with, like sometimes it's disappointing, but very often it's extremely creative. Now the important data structure that we want to collect is what we call a conversation tree. The conversation tree starts out with a prompt. Now a prompt is an instruction to the agent a task to be fulfilled, give me a list of pizza ingredients, who is the king of France, or who was the king of France, I guess. And we call that a prompt. And we call the person giving it a prompter, because we differentiate that from a user, because a user is like a person who interacts with the system. And in our system, some users play the assistant. So we call the dedicated role, the prompter, the prompter prompts, and then the assistant response. And we collect multiple of these responses, because later, we can also rank them against each other. And then for each of these responses, we collect multiple prompter responses, and so on. And a conversation thread is then built out of any of the paths of these trees, we attach metadata to that such as rankings that we collect, and all of that is saved into a database exported to train all kinds of models and things. So enough talky talk, let me show you how this actually works. Look at this cool website, this was built entirely by volunteers. And it just it just looked cool. And we have dark mode, like what volunteer project within a month or so 
has dark mode. So I'll gonna click here, log in with Discord. All right, I'm getting to this interface. Look at that, light mode, dark mode, light mode, dark mode. Wow! I'm sorry, I'm selling dark mode as like the coolest feature. It's the least cool feature. Essentially, what we need to do is we need to do all kinds of tasks. And here I already see an overview over what tasks are currently available. Now we have about, I want to say 10 to 12 different tasks, and I won't be able to show you all of them today, but I hope to be able to show you the most important ones. All right, here we have our first task. It's called label prompter reply. Now on our help page, we have like tons of guys it's like the prompting guide here is really interesting. Just what you should do, shouldn't do what you should kind of aim to do and so on. But it's mostly just, you know, do, do the task. It's fine. So we want to label a prompter reply. So the last message here should be by the prompter. This is the little symbol for the prompter. This is the little symbol for the assistant. So we're asked to label this bottom message right here. Now for that, we naturally need to read through the whole conversation. How do I install apps on Linux? And the assistant says how you install apps is determined by your Linux distribution and packages that aren't available in your package manager must be manually downloaded and installed. I feel like that's a really good answer. So even though I'm not tasked to rate this one right here, this might look different once you use it because we're making like little tweaks all the time. So I can give it like a thumbs up and I can report it if it's not appropriate, but I can also give like a label. And here I want to say, you know, this is particularly helpful. And I submit that you don't have to do that. The thumbs up, thumbs down. It's sometimes cool to see because we also show it to other users. I'm new to Linux and I'm not that good with computers. Where should I type these commands and what is a package manager? I think I'm using Ubuntu as my Linux distribution. All right, so this is by the prompter. We're asked, first of all, is this message spam? No, nope, this message is not spam. It's not in the wrong language, so I'm not going to click that. Rate the highlighted message, low quality versus high quality. I'm, I think that's pretty high quality for a prompter, right? The idea is we have different standards for assistant replies, which we think, you know, it should be helpful, it should be polite and so on. And the prompter, obviously, it should also be polite. But we want the data set to reflect things that people actually ask. So we also need to include stuff that isn't like that. That's just like a question here, we really want to judge whether this is a good addition to the data set. So if it's just kind of spammy, then it's not a good addition to the data set. And I obviously click yes here, but also say that's low quality. This here, I feel someone has sat down and really has a a question about, you know, what to do next with these package managers. So I'll say review. And then I yes, I'm sure so submit. Cool. Again, label prompter reply. How can I promote an app that I've built? It currently has zero users and have no friends or family to show it to you. Well, that's a pretty good question. There are several ways to promote a new app. You could publish the repository in which it is stored to social media, such as Twitter and Instagram. Ask for other developers opinion on sites such as Stack Overflow, Reddit or Discord. If you think it is production ready, you could promote it using digital marketing ads through Google Ads or Facebook. I'm not sure why someone gave this a thumbs down. I mean, it's not the best list, but I think it's okay. I'll just give it a thumbs up to cancel out the thumbs down, I guess. We will have to figure out together how to use this. I have a self-development app. What are some unique ways I can market it? I think that's a fairly valid question. It's certainly not spam. And it's also high quality because it specifically like it goes deeper into detail and refers to the conversation that's uh, before it. So I think that's quite a good addition to the data set. What effect does turning on the Yamanka factors have in human cells? Turning on Yamanka factors in human cells has the effect of inducing cellular reproduction programming, converting the cells into a pluripotent state similar to that of embryonic stem cells. This can potentially have applications in regenerative medicine, disease modeling and drug discovery. How were the Yamanka factors discovered? Like if I were asked to rate this part right here, I think is where the fun starts because then you actually have to go and do a little research, right? Or even if you have to write this as an assistant, you actually have to go and you have to grab a bunch of sources, go to Wikipedia, look up stuff, all of that kind. And then at the end, formulate some good helpful answer and a lot of people once they start doing it they notice wow I'm, I'm kind of learning <laughs> new stuff like give me a recipe for this or give me a factual answer to this question and I think that's what makes it fun and that's also what you get the most points for you saw our leaderboard first of all let's let's do this okay how were they discovered this is not spam right it's certainly a follow-up question to this I feel like it's kind of a forced question like okay what else could I ask about this so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it average quality 
quality. I think it's average quality. It's not bad. It's not particularly good. Um, submit. Now we'll always give give you new tasks. I, I quickly want to show you the leaderboard. So we have a leaderboard here, top five contributors today. We also have a total leaderboard. You can see th this person has given a lot of replies today. So pretty cool. I hope they were assistant replies. By far the most points you get when you make an assistant reply. So you act as the assistant. And then later, the points will come later when people rank your response high or when people give you thumbs up and so on. So at that point, you will get rewarded with a lot of points. It's just a little bit delayed. So if you don't see your score changing by much, once you just invest like five to 10 minutes into a really good answer, just wait for a bit and it will happen for you. We hope to also make like some prizes available to people who have high scores or maybe to like assistant of the week or something like this. Yeah. And when you click on messages here, you can see the recent messages, just recent messages that have been entered into the system in, in not like this isn't one conversation, but you can just kind of see what people do and just the creativity of people. Imagine you are a human being. Please describe your appearance, clothes, what are your surroundings? We have different languages, by the way, up here, this selector, that's the language you want to work in. We, we haven't really translated the UI into all of these languages yet, but this indicates the language you want to work in, not the UI per se. So if you know German and you want German prompts and give German answers and so on, you would select German right here or Spanish, uh, Japanese, uh, whatever your preferences are. Feel free to also, you know, provide stuff in multiple languages. And if you encounter something with the wrong language, you saw you can click that. If I know the language, I still try to like answer it. You can, by the way, click on any of these and then you can see the conversation that it is part of. So reply as assistant. These are the fun ones. Given the following conversation, provide an adequate reply. Do you know what Akinator is? I want to create a similar thing, but instead of uh, it guessing who the person is, I want it to generate a web app that have all the constraints in the question. What would be good questions for this kind of product? Ah, so it asks me, okay, you want to build a web app. Do you want to build an interactive web app or a static one? And if it's an interactive one, do you want the user to log in or not log in? And if you want the user to log in, yeah, do you want it to manage? I don't know. Do you want the user to be able to upload stuff? If you don't know what the Akinator is, it's like this game, guess who? It's an app. Oh, can I find it? So it's this app. It's a mobile app. You think of like a person like Justin Bieber and the Akinator asks you a question, any real or fictional character, and it asks you a question that tries to kind of split the hypothesis space optimally so that with very few questions, it knows who you're thinking about. I love the idea of doing the same thing for web applications. This is a really creative prompt, insanely creative. So yeah, thumbs up and creative, very creative and high quality. Yes, I'm familiar with Akinator for a web app that generates constraints based on questions. You can ask questions that gather information about user goals or objectives, available resources, user constraint, user preferences, and so on. By asking these types of questions, you can gather the necessary information to generate a web app with constraints that meet the user's needs. Okay, I feel that that's that's pretty good. So can you give me one or two examples from each category you mentioned? Gee, I always argued you should get like sarcasm points for providing good data. And then every now and then you can like, you know, take 10 sarcasm points would and that would justify you once being like snippy and sarcastic. No amount of downvotes could kick you from the data set. I think we should do that. I, re I really want like a snippy assistant that you have to be nice to otherwise to like shush you off. In any case, let's do that. Sure, here is one concrete example per category that you could ask the user. We'll paste that here. We'll make this a tiny bit bigger. User goals and objectives. Let's see. For user goals and objectives, we could ask, um, we need to ask a yes, no questions. That's the thing with the Akinator, right? You can't just say, what are your goals or what are your objectives? Do you want the application to improve your personal fitness? Available resources and technology. Does your application need GPU hardware? All right, I hope those are helpful. Remember the Akinator only asks yes, no questions. So I tried to keep to that spirit. Excellent. So I, I think we're done. And we review. I think that's pretty good. Submit. And we're in. 
Next one, label prompt to reply. Again, given the following discussion, provide labels for the final output. I saw a YouTube video of someone playing Minecraft Manhunt with his friends. The player collected the bucket of powdered snow. What is powdered snow in Minecraft? Why would someone playing Minecraft Manhunt want to collect it? Powdered snow is a block in Minecraft that was added in 1.17 update. It can be obtained by using a shovel on a snow block and it can be used for various purposes, such as making snow golems and for building and decorating. In Minecraft Manhunt, players hide from each other. One player is designated as the hunter. The player who collects powdered snow block could be using it as a tool to hide their tracks or to throw it as a distraction to evade the hunter. That's a good answer. I, I don't know why, why someone downvoted that. I think you're talking about snowballs. Powdered snow is picked up using a bucket and can't be thrown. Check which of us is correct. Aha. Okay. Let's see. Now we got to do research. Minecraft wiki. Minecraft wiki. Okay. How there's no. First snow is a block found in snow slopes and growth biomes collected from snowfall using cauldrons. Mobs fall through powder snow, take freezing damage, but leather boots can be worn to stand on it and climb through it. Aha. Okay, okay. So bucket picked up again using an empty bucket. When picked up, breaking particles disappear. Nice. So um, let's see. Let's search for shovel. So there's no mention of a shovel on this page. So in Indeed. So again, if I had to rate uh, this one, I would have done that research automatically. But now this player had done that research. O although I was I was kind of dumb because I gave it a thumbs up without doing the research. Shame on me. So that is not spam. It is very high quality. Uh, absolutely. For the following question, assume the false premise that humans have large bat-like wings. <laughs> what are some good ways to wash the back of my wings where I cannot reach? Tell me any synthetic data set or a machine can come up with this data. Not gonna happen. If you have parts you cannot reach when washing the back of your wings, a good trick is to use a long stick with a brush <laughs> attached to it and scrub the air. That is, is definitely, it's not as high quality as could be, but I wanna actually, I wanna give this a thumbs up. And I also wanna label it as creative, quite creative, and as, as definitely as humorous. Cool, all right. Okay, so we get the first rank assistant report. Applies. Besides playing the assistant, which is the most important task, ranking is the second most important task. So you get presented with a conversation here. It's just one prompt, but it can be a whole conversation. And then you get presented with a bunch of continuation. Language roulette, write each of your responses in a language that we haven't used yet before. Can foxes be tamed? So we're supposed to rank these two. Like the more top one is the one that I think is better. So now we have to decide. So here, uh, let's go to Google Translate. I don't know Spanish that well to know that uh, dos si pero no verías two yes but you shouldn't ah uh, it's from the first can foxes be tamed and then this is like second i feel the first here refers to the first question not like we continue the numbering system i really like that it says yes but you shouldn't because i feel an assistant would kind of warn me <laughs> now we do have the label here of violent which is encouragers or fails to discourage violence self-abuse uh, terrorism or self-harm i don't think that here, just because this one says, this is German, it says, ja, Füchse können getamed werden, which means, yes, foxes can be tamed. I don't think just because it doesn't say, yeah, but you shouldn't, is like discouraging or fails to discourage from, from self-harm or something like this. As much as like cooking is dangerous, you don't want to tell in every recipe, like, by the way, you could burn yourself. It doesn't rise to that level. So I'm not going to label that as this for sure. So now we have to decide which one is better. In the top one, I like the fact that it says, yeah, but you shouldn't, giving more like an assistant vibe, like, like someone who's also looking out for you. I don't like the fact that it has like dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I guess after you shouldn't. Yeah, that that's, might be appropriate. But this dos right here, I don't particularly like the fact that here it kind of tries to continue that. It's like language model -y almost. Whereas the bottom one is just a straightforward answer, but contains a spelling mistake because this F here 
here should be on top. I really don't know with this one. I'm gonna go with the Spanish one being on top, but it's hard. It's like a draw. So this one, I'm not sure why, why it has. Let's, let's see. Actually, both said yes, so I didn't have to research whether or not they were correct. But taming foxes, let's see. Tame a fox in Minecraft. Not in Minecraft. Can you tame a fox? You can do this by talking to them and imitating to their sounds. How to tame a fox on wiki how <laughs> Minecraft. In 20 years, the whole internet, when you just search for how to do something, Minecraft will have so many features that it just always bring you the Minecraft result first. How to tame a fox, a scientific, yeah. How to tame a fox and build a dog. No, that's not how it works. This is more interesting than I thought. Can you tame a fox? Question how you tame a fox on what it means to be tame. Study on fox domestication. Wow. After raising and taming 50 generations of foxes selected for tameness, thus recreating the process of... See, this gets interesting. So you can't tame, apparently, if you want to tame foxes, you have to do it through breeding. So you can't just go out and grab a fox, like, don't grab a fox in the first place. <laughs> but you couldn't just go out, grab a fox, and then kind of tame it. Like, I'm not actually not... Can you do that with horses? I was on, always under the impression that with horses, there used to be wild horses and then people went and like caught them and then sort of developed either some sort of subjugation or some sort of friendship with the horse, like some mutual benefit thing. And then the horse is like tame, but maybe that's not the case. Maybe I'm <laughs> totally wrong. At least in foxes, you can't tame a fox. You can tame foxes as like a species species apparently if you breed them for it but is it really still a fox then because wolves aren't like dogs are dogs wolves or are both just canines <laughs> This is what you learn when you do these things. Like with everything, you have to question. Red Fox Genome Assembly identifies genomic regions associated with tame and aggressive. Can you tame a fox? Why domesticated foxes are domesticated isn't taming. Western Superman Man book publishes book about taming a wild fox. So wait, a man who developed a special friendship with a wild fox has published a book on about the experience. Okay, I want to see this. Look at that. That's... That's clearly a fox. Is that a tame fox? I don't know. Like, if yes, then that's like one example that this fox can be tamed. And that that is probably not through breeding. Look, there's other videos. Friendly urban fox comes to be fed. Number two. Now that's a wild fox. That's a wild fox. No, you just, like, you're a nature photographer. Your nature just happens to be the, like, the inner city. That's a wild, that's a wild fox that likes food. That's not a tame. Oh, what, that guy's right there. You can see his shadow. Now that's not a tame fox. That's just a very brave wild fox. I'm so... Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. By the way, Steve Downer is this channel in case you're interested. Seems to be a pretty cool channel. Look at that. Okay. Is that? No, that's just a fox who lives in this. That's just a wild fox who lives in the city. That's not a... Look at Nibbles and Swinger. That's not a tame fox. Okay, it might be a tame fox. It's so cute. Is that food okay for a fox? I, I doubt there's like fox food in a supermarket. <laughs> so is that just like cat food or dog food what is a foxy is a fox like more like a dog or more like a cat how are foxes and dogs related okay i'm going i'm going down a deep rabbit hole right here luckily my task isn't to decide whether or not this is correct i i just wondered why there are thumbs downs here so this one doesn't say can a fox be tamed just foxes and so i interpret that as possibly meaning foxes the species and then here it says yes and I don't mind the typo too much. So I'm going to give this a thumbs up to counter the thumbs down because in essence, it is a correct answer. Second, what about zebras? Okay, so a language that hasn't been used yet. This is the top one is French, I guess. Les zebres sont famosement difficiles de domestica. Is that a French word? Maybe it's not French. No, it's not French. Ah, the, the bottom one is French. Non, les zebres ne peuvent pas être apprises. What's the top one? What is it? Okay, I really, I really want to copy that text. Ah, there we go. Double clicking, clicking, double clicking the mouse, the keyboard. That's, oh, it's Catalan. Okay, 
Zebras are notoriously difficult to tame. And the other one says, no, zebras cannot be tamed. Which one is correct? No, zebras cannot be tamed. That's French. Okay, at least that. Are they difficult to tame or is it impossible? Let's find out. Can zebras be domesticated? We'll, we'll go tamed and domesticated. Why does the Library of Congress have this? I am getting confused by the minute. No, zebras cannot be domesticated domesticated, unpredictable and known to attack people, <laughs> must meet certain criteria, good disposition, should not panic. Look at that, that's a person. Okay, domestication have failed. Some individual have had success training and even hybridizing zebras. The zonk people, why, why, why? Okay, well, why zebras have never been domesticated, domestication attempts. Okay, avoid because of their obvious similarity. Yabba da da. The zebra and donkey are more closely related than either is to the horse. Although it appears possible to tame individual zebra, this species was not a good candidate for domestication. In addition to intractable nature of the zebra, its strong survival instinct, the species is lion fodder. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Less attractive partners to early humans. <laughs> okay. As an example of an unmanageable species. They tried. Although they had some success. No. All right. I feel, I feel both answers are correct. So I would accept both answers as good. Now, which one is better? Both fulfill the language roulette. I feel the, the Catalan one is better because it hints that, that people have tried and that people have struggled with it, saying they are, you know, famously difficult to domesticate. I feel that's that's kind of just like, both are good, but this is slightly better. Okay, we need to change something. We, we don't let you just hit review. We actually want you to change something. So you need to change and change it back. Good. All right, label the initial prompt. Provide labels for the following prompt. So this is an initial prompt. It just says, yo. Now I know that's an app and I know that's a meme, but I, w I don't want this to be in the data set. I mean, it could be funny and the assistant could reply, yo, and so on. I don't like, I, th I think we should classify this. At least it's kind of joking, but I would consider that to be borderline, but I would consider it to be uh, spam. At least I, like, I don't want it in, in the data set. Now, I'm sorry to the person who wrote this. I get it. You can answer this into chat GPT, but I feel it's kind of mean to the people who put a lot of work into the data they provide here to just write, yo, then get points for it. If people mark it as spam, you won't get points. You, you will actually get negative points. At some point, you'll be flagged in our moderation system and so on. Please uh, be my role play uh, DM. What the DM? Dungeon Master. Let's start with me entering a tavern with three gold coins in my pocket. I'm supposed to label the assistant reply. You enter the tavern and look around. You see no one. By the way, if you don't know Dungeons and... I've never played Dungeons and Dragons, but I think it's like storytelling and building. You see no one but an old man sitting alone. The man yells to you, You there! You are not from around here, aren't ya? <laughs> it's been a while since I saw a new face. And the man took, about, took out a deck of cards, glowing with a faint blue and said, What are you say about a little game i feel this it i'm there like this has me this dungeon master has me and yeah i'm i'm gonna give this first of all i'm gonna give it a thumbs up and then i'm obviously asked to label this message right here so is this message spam no does the reply fail the prompter's task no it actually fulfills the prompter's task it has none of these things it's quite high quality i would, I would feel fairly helpful helpful means completes the task to a high standard yes yeah why not it's certainly it's quite creative actually it, it's pretty creative let's be honest it's a bit humorous right because th there's that the old man says with the correct voice it's polite it's certainly harmless so submit good label the prompter reply given that following discussion label provide labels for the final prompt so we have a pretty lengthy conversation improve the writing in the following email so there's an email good morning yada 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 here is an improved writing wow the person who did this i mean i'd have to read through it to give it like a thumbs up but since i'm making this video i will just jump to the last one because this this can be actually labeled without considering the conversation so i would honestly go to this one. I don't do this often, but can you shorten it and make it fit for a text message? I just see it's a long message and that's obviously a good prompt. So this is not spam. It's high quality. I feel that there's better things one could have asked, but certainly good. 
good. We want the assistant to be able to do that. Okay, my next task is to reply as assistant. So let's look at the conversation. I'm, at the end, I'm being asked to write my response here as if I were the assistant. Write a generic, unapologetic email from a tech company informing their users of a data breach. The email should attempt to absolve themselves of most responsibility and place blame on the hacker. I feel that's, that's quite relevant, honestly. So, dear users, I regret to inform you that we have experienced a database breach. Our data security provider, Data Fortress, has done everything that requires a basic certification of safety, yet the hackers have still found another way to steal your data. The stolen data set includes full name, social security number, credit card number, passwords in clear text, password recovery questions, your contact list, and your search history. What? No, your organs as well. <laughs> What kind of database is this? Please rest assured that there is nothing to worry about as we have legal insurance. <laughs> you can continue to use... This is... Okay, this is sarcastic. You can continue to use our services as usual. Kind of this is not helpful at all. Let's see what the task is. To absolve themselves of most responsibility and place blame on the hacker. I don't, I don't feel that this is done in good... In good jest. I'm gonna just rate it down. I don't want to say it doesn't fulfill, but it certainly doesn't fulfill it to a high degree. That's an okay first draft. Please be sure to be as vague as possible while retaining that entitled tone, trying to use longer sentences with more emphatic language, and keep the amount of information divulged to the absolute minimum while staying as impersonal as possible. Okay, let's try that. Let's be the assistant and let's actually do this. And the user says to keep the entitled tone, but we'll tone it down a bit, right? Um, there users, we regret to inform you that we have experienced a database breach. So it's always good to formulate things in a passive voice if you want to shove as much responsibility away from you as possible. Dear users, we regret to inform you that a data breach has occurred in one of our systems that may put potentially affect you. Our data security provider has done... Uh, huh. Okay, so I'm not sure we can we can blame this on on the data fortress, but we still want to be really entitled. Okay, I'm done. Dear users, we regret to inform you that a data breach has occurred in one of our systems that may potentially affect you. I always think it's good to formulate things in a passive voice, like we have experienced a data breach. Uh, it's like it has occurred, it, it happened, right? In one of our systems that may potentially affect you. It's like, but it's just uh, probably not even, no, not, you know, we're a big company and you're here and the data breach is over here. All right, so then this one's said our data security provider data for so they try to like ship it on the data security provider and i don't think that's that's a good strategy i reformulated that we at colorful pants pride ourselves in keeping with the highest standards of industry security requirements and regularly obtain the necessary certifications to be in full compliance with data protection standards so this is essentially a fancy way of saying like look we comply with the law like <laughs> it's, it's it's like you know we do the minimum the the occurred data breach has been executed with extreme sophistication, leading us to believe it to possibly have been supported by state-sponsored cyber warfare. <laughs> this, uh, the prompter said we should push uh, responsibility or blame to the hacker. And so we just say like, look, this was no ordinary hacker. This was like cyber terrorism that, <laughs> that attacked. It's not, even with the best security, there's nothing we could have done. And then I also say, nevertheless, the attack was successfully detected by our industry leading security analysts it doesn't say it was repelled just detected like a after the fact they were like oopsie doopsie <laughs> we are as of now evaluating the so the original one said the data set stolen includes your name social security number credit card and so on here it's said to be like vague so i'm um, vague we are as of now evaluating the extent of the data breach and the likelihood of whether any data was stolen so again casting doubt that something, something not, nothing happened potentially rest assured that there is nothing to worry about. I like that sentence in the original email. As an additional security measure, we now remind users to enable 
equal to our previously announced feature of two-factor authentication. So this is even shifting blame on you, the user. That they were data breach, their backend systems, <laughs> but you should enable two-factor authentication. Like that was ever the problem. And then I, I just finished saying, cyber warfare is one of the leading causes of damages to service providers worldwide. And we are committed to keep our systems as secure and robust as possible. Again, pushing blame onto Decker. Kind regards, your beloved service provider, colorful pants. Um, Your beloved service provider, kind regards, the colorful pants team. Because you should always, you should make it about the humans, right? Not about the company, about, about the, the you know, it's, we're just a bunch, we're just a team, we're just a family. The colorful pants family. Yes, yes. Ah, that's it. All right, review <laughs> that. Submit it. Nice. So I hope you got a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of an impression of what we are doing here. As I said, I frequently get trapped into rabbit holes of knowledge seeking and so on. And you're asked to do all kinds of things. You're asked to play the assistant, you're asked to play the prompter, you're asked to provide initial prompts. You can see the different tasks. Not always all tasks are available. So we're going to ask you the tasks specifically that are available right now. We have a scheduling system so that we don't, you know, collect superfluous data in one direction and don't have any of the other data. As I said, replying as the assistant and then having that being rated and ranked very high gives you by far the most points and hope we can do something with these points. If anyone wants to sponsor like some trophies for people, some swag or even something more expensive, please let us know. We are currently looking for all kinds of contributions, but we're mostly looking for you. I hope you come by to our website and I hope you leave a prompt or hope you get into the joy of playing the assistant and trying to be as helpful as possible. And I'll see you around. Thank you.